Welcome to Stoneham, Massachusetts, a small community of 22,000 inhabitants established in 1725, located only a few miles north of the city of Boston. Hi, I'm Paul Maisano, and we're here to talk about various issues regarding the infrastructure of Stoneham. This could apply to any community. In particular, we're looking at the gas infrastructure, or as some would say, the lack of it. The nation is transitioning to natural gas over the next 10 to 15 years, and Stoneham, Massachusetts is going to take careful examination of where they are today, where they were yesterday, and where they wish to be in the future. In the 50s and the 60s, this one provides people. Now, we understand that there are many infrastructures within our public roadways. Bridges, asphalt, sewer water, underground utilities such as electric and gas. However, we believe that the gas infrastructure in all communities needs to be looked at carefully. There have been a number of failures in Springfield, Mass, and even most recently in New York City with the devastation of over two city blocks and the deaths of a dozen people. 50 injured. It's time for America to look at its gas infrastructure network because the delivery of this fuel, a fuel that is going to be incorporated into the future of this nation's energy source and energy usage, has to be safe. And that's where we're going to go first. We're going to look at a little history relative to where the gas has been and what we can use it for. But more than anything, most assuredly, it has to be transmitted in a safe manner. There have been a lot of myths about gas being dangerous, and yes, it has been in the past, where there have been results of many deaths over history. But we have a decaying old infrastructure of cast iron pipes and weakened joints. And it's time that all communities and all utility companies pay special attention to this network because we can deliver the option of a hydrocarbon, a cleaner fuel to our people, to our communities in a safe manner. We're going to investigate first the history of gas with the usage, and then we'll move forward into how we can deliver this vapor to the people safely. Natural gas has enormous potential as a versatile energy source. While it's had a history of powering electric generators and heating stovetops, it's growing in use as an efficient fuel that also powers cars and trucks. But what exactly is natural gas? Natural gas is a naturally occurring chemical, primarily made up of methane, CH4. Its purity makes it an environmentally friendly fuel. Methane does not leave a residue when burned, so its emissions do not react with sunlight to create smog. The natural gas we use today began as microscopic plants and animals living in the ocean tens of millions of years ago. As they thrived, they absorbed energy from the sun, which was stored as carbon molecules in their bodies. When they died, they sank to the bottom of the sea and were covered by layer after layer of sediment. As these plants and animals became buried deeper in the earth over millions of years, heat and pressure began to rise. The amount of pressure and degree of heat transformed the biomatter into natural gas. After natural gas was formed, it tended to migrate upward through tiny pores and cracks in the surrounding rock. Some natural gas seeped to the surface, while other deposits traveled upward until they were trapped under impermeable layers of rock, such as shale or clay. These trapped deposits are where we find natural gas today. In 1859, Edwin Drake drilled the first commercial well in Titusville, Pennsylvania, striking natural gas and oil. This is considered by many to be the beginning of the natural gas industry. 
For most of the 1800s, natural gas was used almost exclusively as a fuel for lamps because no pipeline network existed to transport large amounts of gas over long distances, most of the gas was used to light local city streets. It was moved through small bore lead pipe. Then in 1885, Robert Bunsen invented a burner that mixed air with natural gas. The Bunsen burner showed how gas could provide heat for cooking and warming buildings. After the 1890s, many cities began converting their street lamps to electricity forcing gas producers to look for new markets. But the lack of mobility to transport gas to consumers was still an issue. In the energy industry, natural gas was originally obtained as a byproduct from oil production. Since it was viewed as too costly to produce, much of it was burned off by flaring at the wellhead. Improvements in metals, welding techniques, and pipe making during World War II open natural gas to new markets thanks to pipeline networks. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, thousands of miles of pipeline were constructed throughout the United States. Although natural gas was becoming economically attractive with a growing pipeline network, crude oil was still far more popular and more widely used as a source of energy. For years, the industry perception remained that supplies of natural gas were limited Although natural gas had been discovered in tight rock formations called shale, it was deemed too expensive and difficult to harness. Today, natural gas is used all over the world as a versatile form of clean burning energy. Common uses include heating homes and powering hot water heaters, dryers, and stovetops. But its ability to adapt to so many other needed areas have made it an ideal energy for making plastics, powering electric turbines, and commercial chillers that cool office buildings. When used as an automotive fuel, compressed natural gas, or CNG, is a clean fuel that can power buses, trucks, and compact cars. Natural gas has proven to be a clean, affordable, abundant alternative to gasoline and coal. 99% of the natural gas used in the U.S. is produced at home in our own nation. With a variety of uses and new technology, Natural gas is proving it's the energy of the future. As we travel over our community roadways, we sometimes tend to forget about the valuable working components far below the asphalt. When they require replacement, we must bring in large pieces of digging equipment, careful design engineering, and special construction materials. Much needed public safety ingredients must be added into the work program that goes on in many of our city streets. As the daily traffic is detoured, the painstaking process seems to take forever. To make matters worse, ideal conditions for weather and pedestrian traffic, safety, and production quotas are all part of the equation for success. Although winter work sometimes can be employed in road work programs, the high cost can be prohibitive. As workers prepare a new section of excavation, they align a series of temporary large thick steel safety panels that prevent the potential collapse of the surrounding utilities in earthen walls. Even in good weather, in certain a utility line, only a few inches from an existing active water or natural gas conduit is dangerous. It takes patience and skill. Like many utility contractors along the route, another section of this quality linear pipe is being completed. With no interruption, to the required services like gas, water, sewer, or electric to the neighborhood. Things will continue much as normal in the homes, businesses nearby. Life continues in another successful day at work upgrading our aging infrastructure prove the safety and the services of our communities.
is our environment in danger of being affected by leaks from our natural gas system? The answer to this will be addressed in this next video clip by Bob Ackley from the Safety Gas Inc. Company of Southborough, Mass. When he did an investigation in Newton, Mass. in 2009. Let's eavesdrop on how he handled discovering what natural gas can do to our public shade trees and to our environment in general. So there's always a gap between the pavement and the curb yeah. that you can get into. So that's an eight inch hole, it's 58% gas. So what's happening, this is really getting choked 58%. out here. 58%? Yeah. Wow. So I'll switch it over to auction. Again, it's hard to, you know, without doing the 18 inch holes, you know, I, I need the dig safe. So I just do a quick little test hole here. You know, it's, this isn't really accurate because it must be drawing from the top, but it's 13% oxygen. And it should be? Well, at 58% was the initial reading. So it's drawing a little bit from the top. It should be 58% displacement, which would mean, call it 40% uh, basic air down there. And that's 20% oxygen, so it would be around eight is what the real number would be. So the real actual eight, eight oxygen, oxygen is probably only eight. But and it could be lower. If I do an 18 inch mm -hmm. test hole and do it really tight, mm -hmm. I'll get, uh, But 14 is still lower than no, it shouldn't, what it should, it should be. be. 21. Actually, I should know that. That was uh, that's what you learn in uh, basic uh, elementary school science. Air is one one fifth oxygen. There you go. Is that, yeah, right. Really, what I'm doing here is just verifying this gas at both because it had the catch basin that's blown out. Here again, we have 48 percent gas right here at the tree. Yeah. This tree's gone. Be my guess. Even though it has a lot of leaves, still. Well, compared but to the, the one next to it. Yeah. But in terms of the, yeah, there's a lot of branches where that's clearly sort of died back. Yeah, here you go, here's nine yeah. oxygen here. Eight. See, I got it pretty tight here. The oxygen level's really dropping. It's probably even lower than that. It'll probably go down to three or four, maybe. But I'll determine that when I come back and do a thorough testing here. Yeah. Seven and a half oxygen. So yeah. basically the tree's being choked out of oxygen and the roots are dried out. It's like a neighborhood where you've got to have a lot in a small space. Is it the whole vintage of the pipes under this area that they're all kind of going at the same time? It's the whole city. Well, that too. Yeah. It's everywhere. Is it, you may get areas, th this is old here. This was probably 1920s, 1930s. And you have cast iron pipes, uh, mains, in a lot of the area and bare steel services. So the services are corroding and the cast iron leaks at the joints. It doesn't, the, the cast iron pipes are actually in good shape. It's the joints that are- The joints that are always the problem. The, that are, yeah. have dried out and, and leak. So I don't know what it is here. It could be the service, could be the main. You know, a lot of the services are so old, uh, you have an inch and a half to two inch services generally that were put in uh, with good material at the time, bare mm -hmm. steel, you know, it was the best material at the time, but, if it was put in in 1930, it's uh, 80 years old in right. the ground. So, you know, steel in the ground is going to corrode. So I, I don't know what's here underground. I mean... Now, is steel what they use today, or do they use something else now? No, plastic. We're here to give you an update on the unfortunate situation that occurred in the city of Springfield, where we had a gas explosion. That occurred, a call came in at 4.20 p.m. An explosion occurred about 5.25 p.m. It was really uh, in the area of Worthington and Chestnut Street. Uh, Scores Club it was really ground uh, zero. Uh, On November 23rd, mid-afternoon, in Springfield, Massachusetts, a stench of Mercaptan the ingredient in gas was found to be prominent in a business district downtown. Within an hour, the entire area exploded and it became a war zone with over 20 injuries between fire, 
police, and gas company workers. The damage to buildings was incredible. There was no loss of life, which was cited as one of the blessings to this incredibly huge, devastating area. Uh, unit that's already been put into uh, effect. Uh, our building commissioner, Steve Desolette, who is here, uh, he has gone in with the fire department to examine the uh, buildings. Our uh, deputy director of code enforcement, Dave Potter, the contact has been made to all the uh, building owners that have occurred. Uh, we're on site here with Columbia gas officials. <coughs> Obviously, the Lieutenant Governor Tim Murray uh, was here. He was with me at a prior event, and it's marshaled, marshaled all state forces here. He'll be speaking uh, very shortly. Uh, we are going to indicate uh, to you uh, what we have, what has occurred, uh, what we have done to keep our arms around this whole thing as we move forward. And the city is uh, very resilient at this point in time. Uh, through God's mercy, we are not aware of any fatalities. Thank you. Only a couple of years later, in New York City, on March 12, 2014, another natural gas explosion occurred, this time with fatalities, 70 injured and millions of dollars in property damage. It's time that we look at our gas infrastructure system. As a property owner, you've decided to convert to natural gas. What happens next? You contacted your local gas company. They, in fact, identify all of the infrastructure below the grade in front of your home. It's very much required that you take responsibility for any sprinkler, underground oil tanks, or other mechanical features that service your home. Once the roadway is identified, a path has been engineered by the gas company to service pipes to your home. Large pieces of equipment are brought in to facilitate this work with ease. The installation usually takes less than a day. Once the roadway is identified, penetrations are made at various strategic points. The new plastic pipe will be inserted within and from each of these holes. The gas service to the street and to the neighborhood must be exposed. Once the main line has been identified and exposed, another digging process must take place near the building to where the service is going to be ending. Tunneling equipment is utilized to go below asphalt and sidewalks. The penetrations are required not to disrupt much of the existing surface, asphalt, and grassy areas. Equipment to clean and tap into the main high pressure line is placed so that it's tested for safety. Once all of this is done, the piping towards the building shall be terminated with a gas reduction valve, which brings the gas pressure down to a, under a half a pound. Temporary asphalt shall be placed over any penetrations until a secondary crew comes in with the permanent patches. This is to ensure vehicular traffic and pedestrian safety. Once this is completed, the final finishing touches are placed around the home. Earth will be replaced. You will have to seed areas that have been penetrated. And now your home is prepared to receive gas. Now that the work has been completed outside your home, what has to be done in the home must be done by a local plumber. A permit must be retained from your local municipal city or town hall. This is another portion of the job that must be completed and be tested to be safe. A hot air furnace is installed. A new hot water heater, that small container to the right of your screen is replacing large 40 and 50 gallon tanks. This is the wave of the future. 97.7% efficient. This small little box will now bring you hot water continuously. The experienced people will deliver services to your home for the future. Here we have the service and the installation of the secondary side of the meter. 
The cast iron malleable pipe that you see with the tag has been approved by the local inspector. The gas meter will be placed between the introductory supply side to the left and the load side to the right. This in many cities and towns can be read electronically. You're ready to push a button to the safe, convenience, and easy, very affordable energy of the future. So I'm uh, going to talk about natural gas. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you looked at the EIA slides, you see like a 1% uh, increased share of natural gas in the energy mix up to 2035 and only a 4% increase in um, electricity uh, share by 2035. So you, you're tempted to say, what's the big deal with natural gas? So I just want to run through quickly what's the big deal and then talk about some of the uncertainties uh, in these kinds of uh, projections. So the main thing is that cheap gas is good. Uh, it puts more money in uh, consumers' pockets, uh, in industry's uh, pockets, um, and in economic speak, it increases social welfare. So this is all a good thing, and if we can develop the gas sustainably, that's, that's great. The second thing is, is that uh, in response to demand increases for natural gas, the price doesn't rise, is, is projected to not rise that much. So in economic speak, again, that's the elasticity of supply is much higher, flatter supply curves. And that's a great thing. It allows businesses to plan. Uh, under much greater certainty about what the future of natural gas prices will be. And it also gives us some room to think about new uses for natural gas without thinking that prices will rise a lot to choke off that demand. Um, it's not so much a game changer on energy security because for that to happen, oil and gas would have to be substitutes. And they're really not, at the moment, substitutes. Now, it does uh, have us avoid, this cheap gas has us avoid being a net importer of LNG as we were going to be, and now we can be a net exporter. So that's, that's important. Uh, and then it allows us the opportunity to diversify our transportation fuels, where right now we're 97% dependent on oil for our transportation needs. CNG, compressed natural gas for our vehicles. The United States has always enjoyed low gasoline prices and this has caused us not to develop natural gas fuel vehicles. CNG, we need to build more facilities to service our fuel of the future, natural gas. There currently are many fueling facilities throughout the United States, but these need to be expanded to service the natural gas hybrid vehicles being built today. Clean energy at half the cost, half the emissions, Already, large companies such as Waste Management is transitioning their fleets to natural, clean, compressed gas. UPS, buses from the public systems throughout the nation are considering and have evolved into clean, natural gas fuel of the future. It's time that we examine this for our vehicles, for smaller businesses. What we need to do is we need to look at this issue, equip our streets and our residential properties with the ability and option to go with gas. It's a safe fuel. If the piping is upgraded and maintained and constantly inspected, we won't have problems. We'll have benefits. I'm Paul Maisano on the issues. Oh, 
down. Never mind that. Where's the gas? Shut off. Yeah.